Welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. And baby, some truth is coming out tonight. <laughs> I'm your host, Rick Becker, co-host Lori Hintz. And it's my fault. <laughs> yes. You put, Lori said, uh, or yeah, she said, hey, by the way, I put you on for Rick's rant. You haven't done one for a while. I'm like, okay. Okay. Let's talk about Rick's rant. Um, what we're looking at for a concern that I have I want to discuss with you is a question I received, pull it for me guys, um, from a reporter yesterday that indicated, um, who indicated, that he didn't think there was going to be a lot of support for a proposal I made, we've discussed it on the program, regarding not spending all of the federal ARPA money, that's the American Recovery Plan money. Um, we have a billion dollars of it, a little over a billion dollars to spend. My proposal is to not spend it right now. Spend it in 2023 we, when we can be deliberative. Instead of cramming spending a billion dollars into three days and voting on it in one massive bill, we sh the citizens of North Dakota deserve better. That's my position. So he asks, what kind of support will you get? And I said, well, at best, a small handful. But it occurred to me, it's actually more than a small handful. It might be a small handful that would actually vote on it. But it's a more significant number that think it's a good idea that would agree with me, but won't vote for it. So the question is, why is that? It started, started me thinking, why is it that people would not vote to not spend money? In other words, why are elected officials so afraid to not spend money? And I think that it, what it comes down to is a certain sense of inevitability. Uh, there's this momentum, this inertia going on, and the general consensus is these bills are going to pass. This budget is going to pass. So there's no point in trying to stand up against it. The best I can do is to work with it, work on the margins, tinker a little bit, try and make it a better bill than if I wasn't otherwise involved in. But it occurred to me, this is not just the ARPA money that we're talking about. This is every budget bill since before I was elected in 2012. And the reason I ran was spending. The reason I formed my version of the Freedom Caucus, which I called the Bastiat Caucus, was because of our spending habits, because of this acquiescence to just saying, whatever is coming through on budget bills, you gotta vote yes, because come on, what else are you going to do? One of the other concerns is not only that, well, it's gonna pass anyway, so what the heck, it's also a fear, frankly, because the legislature is kind of like a club in, in that you, you make friends, you have a good time, you build relationships. Now, voting no on budget bills is going to start to put you out there. You'll be identified as a person who's going against the grain, who's putting up barriers, who's causing conflict. If you vote on too many, if you vote no on too many budget bills, you're going to be ridiculed, you're going to be marginalized, ostracized. So there's all this pressure to not go against the grain. And why would you, if it's going to pass anyway, why would you put yourself in that position? Nobody likes being ridiculed. Nobody likes being on the outside. It doesn't matter if a budget bill has 20, 30, 40% increases like we saw in 2011, in 2013, and beyond. It doesn't matter how many new employees get brought in so the taxpayers are on the hook for unfunded liabilities with pension plans that are not fully funded. None of that matters. What matters is it's going to pass anyway. Why would you stand in the face of that? This brings me to my next point on this topic. I received an email from Senator Dick Deaver. Now, I would not normally discuss emails. I consider them confidential. But Senator Deaver sent it to all Republican legislators. It was not confidential. In it, by the way, it was, his letter was in response to an email from me indicating that, you know what, we've got the leftists coming at us. I've got concerns about a governor who's overstepping uh, and doesn't respect the uh, a line between legislative branch and executive branch. We need to band together the, this, this time of the Bastiats, the conservatives, and the moderates uh, fighting. We need to get past that. We need to recognize that we are like a family. And some of us bug the crap out of other of us, but we gotta get together. That was my, that was my email. In his response, <clears throat> he chose to kind of do a slap down of me, which is fine. Um, you know, I'm sure some people enjoyed that. 
but in it as, as evidence for proof of, of why the Bastiats need to be derided, because that's what it was about. It was about making fun of or marginalizing the conservatives, the fiscal conservatives, the Bastiats. In it, he had what I'll call Exhibit A. It was a list of 49 budget bills in 2021. He identifies everyone who voted no on 10 or more bills out of the 49. He identifies those people as being the problem. Interestingly, there are four senators, 15 House members. The Senate is definitely not as fiscally conservative as the House. There's even one Democrat, Representative Marvin Nelson is on the list. Most interestingly, the House Appropriations Chair, the guy who is in charge of all of the budget bills, is on the list as being a problem for voting no on budget bills. Really, the way this list should be taken is that it is a good list for you, the citizen of North Dakota, to identify, to be aware of who the fiscal conservatives are in the legislature. Now, in his email to me, Senator Deaver says, abdication, abdication of the responsibility we have to fund state government is not a conservative position. So here's the thing. When a fiscal liberal attacks a fiscal conservative on their voting record on spending bills, there is always going to be a logical problem. It will never stand up to scrutiny. So Senator Deaver posits that our choices are either vote for the spending bill, doesn't matter if it's 20, 25, 30, 35% of an increase, you vote for it. Or you vote for no funding. If you don't vote for it, you are for not funding that agency or, that, or the state. Now that's known as a logical fallacy called a fallacy of false choice, a fallacy of false dichotomy, a fallacy of false dilemma. What it means is those are not the two choices. You can vote no on the huge spending, and if enough people have the guts to vote no on it, it goes back to appropriations to take spending out and then comes back to be voted on again. And at that point, perhaps you can vote yes on it. That is not an abdication. That is a fallacy. He says further, quote, some of us have defined their service with nay votes. Now I'll tell you what, I have not defined my service with nay votes. I have defined my service by sticking to principle. Spending too much, regardless of whether it's in one budget bill or 30 budget bills, goes against my principle and I will vote no. That's what defines my service. He says, some of us have defined their service with nay votes, but imagine where we would be if those nay votes had carried the day. Yes, Senator Deaver, imagine where we would be if there had been more nay votes for the huge increase in spending over the numerous budget bills we've had for the last 10 to 12 years. Imagine, imagine that government, state government, we would be not so bloated that taxpayers would be keeping more of their money that we could have easily, easily, completely eliminated the income tax, and if we had a spine at all, we could have gotten rid of property tax. That's where we would be, Senator Deaver. Imagine, yes, I invite you to imagine, if you had principles about fiscal conservatism, if you had principle enough to vote no on something without worrying about what someone else thought of you, of whether you would no longer fit in with the cool kids, about whether you're going to be reelected. Imagine where we would be. Imagine how much better the state would be if more people voted like the people you have put on your list to identify for ridicule and marginalization. Thank you, Senator Deaver, for pointing that out.